Alright guys, we're back for the round 6 Supercoach review. Um, so yeah, the team went and everything, but off the bat, pretty good week. Uh, I'd probably classify this as like one of the bad... Like, it went bad, but it got a good score out of it. Uh, top 1%, which is crazy. I thought this was like a uh, terrible score. Like 2200, kind of just made it over. It took a couple of... Uh, big rookie scores and stuff like that to make it over. But yeah, I, I did not think this was going to happen this week. Huge rank jump, 11,000 rank jump into the top 5k, which is good. Uh, I guess top 4k mark. Um, yeah, not not bad so far. Team value is going good. Probably want it either like 500k more or... I don't think you could probably get a million more. <clears throat> I think about 500k more is what you're looking at. Uh, and you, you've been able to get that if you just hopped on some of the like good rookie picks and stuff like that. Alright, so into the team. Nick Dacos, uh, what a absolute star he is. Um, we could be watching the best player of this generation in Nick Dacos. And like, that's crazy to say, but like, actually could be. He best like uh comparison i could make like you know i'm a basketball fan at heart uh is like a stephen curry or something like that the way he's actually changed the game steph changed the game to like make three pointers so much more like uh emphasized over a, a two um dacos is changing the game in you don't actually have to be getting all these contested balls and putting your body on the line all the time you can dominate the game through uncontested and just kicking it around the field being efficient with it is kind of like changing the uh uh I don't know, the mentality of the league which you know good luck to him he's definitely he's got to be leading in the brownlow votes yeah great player to watch Stewart, another good week from him um he did drop a little bit in cash, but he's still averaging basically 105. He's going to be a top six defender, easy, probably around top four defender. Um, yeah, you take this. This is a, a good week from him. Siebel, again, uh, another good week. S scored the same as Stewart, which considering we got Siebel in at uh, about 300k, I want to say. Yeah, 350k started him. Um, yeah, that's pretty good for him to be rivaling a uh, 600k defender. Chase Jones was the trade-in, so just to kind of go over like why I went with this route in trades, uh, I ended up going Chase Jones, Luke Edwards, and Michael Johnson, Matthew Johnson, there we are, um, yeah, so with Chase, it was just, I need some quick cash, like, this team is so dead, it hit like Thursday night, um, round six so got to this game and I was like because I I'd already put in Matthew Johnson because I, I was like oh whatever I'll just take him and I saw he scored bad and I was like wow okay so we have no one that can score that's like you know rookie priced um he had like a break in of like negative 13 negative something like that um I was like all right well even if he scores 50 to 70 yeah, it's uh, cash. Little did I know, he's. I've just traded in two wings in Chase Jones, Luke Edwards, which same thing for Edwards. It was just um, he's a, a talented player on a really, really bad team. Um, so I thought, yeah, he's guaranteed games and stuff like that. But Chase is. They're both wings, and they both got. They were both playing this week on grounds that weren't favourable to wings, so not good from him. Uh, next week should be all right, though. I think West Coast is back at Optus. Optus is good for wings, uh, especially the way West Coast play at Optus. They just kind of go around. They never go central, which is kind of annoying to watch. Uh, I wish they would use the corridor a little bit, but uh, I guess they don't have anyone, so it's kind of use what you got. Uh, for Chase, who's he got? Playing at Adelaide again. He's been scoring well at Adelaide, so... Even at Adelaide, I wouldn't say it's, like, favourable to Wings. I think it's just the Crows' game plan uh, is pretty favourable. 
Then Stocker, Stocker finally put up a pretty bad score for his standards, but um, the Saints still looked all right. So he's been in the 70s every week. This is the first week he's dropped out of it. Just give me a sec. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Oh, all right, there we go. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, Stocker, he's been good. Um, good. What did I bring him in at? It was 220. Uh, I think he was my Liam Jones replacement, who... I mean, Liam Jones has been going all right. Um, I don't know. 216. Uh, so a little bit higher than Liam Jones. What is Jones at now? Oops. There we are. Uh, 293. All right, so I did make a fair bit more money making that trade. So, yeah. Um, I'd hold him uh, if you've got him. If you have no other problems, then definitely trade him on. Uh, get all these mid prices and rookies just off the field. This week showed why you can't have so many rookies on the field. Uh, this screwed me. Uh, this, I mean, Ryan was good, but you can't be expecting 82. Um, this, you know, it's not good. You, you want to get these guys off the field. That's a uh, part of it. McKenna uh, was kind of the same. It just didn't show up for the four quarters. So it, it, he plays kind of for two and then goes missing for two as well. Um, it, I do think Rich coming back, who's been back, I think, the last two weeks, uh, that's impacted his scores. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, 93 versus Port, you know, 86 versus Collywood, and then these are with uh, Rich back. Not great scores. I am probably looking at moving on McKenna this week just because he's, his break even's not that great. So 62, um, last couple of weeks he would have missed it if it was 62. So probably looking at moving him on this week. 300k is fine. Considering we got him in at 167, it's around about 150k made. Um, so yeah. The bench, Constable, uh, Constable Constable didn't play. He's still waiting on an injury for him to come back. Uh, he sh he's been dominating in the uh, twos, but if, if there's no injury, he's probably not going to make the side. Um, Cowan is really bad. Uh, this guy shouldn't, probably shouldn't be on an AFL list. Like, not on the list, but like on the game day uh, 22 or whatever, the named ones. Uh, you should be in the VFL. Yeah, he's just not ready for the AFL yet. Um, I don't know what you do. Okay, so got him in at 117. He's going up 204. How much has he made on the season? Only 87k. Hasn't he made 100k yet? Uh, I think it's a trade out though. Because Sin Cotter's coming in. Oh, he's already came in. He's played one game and he just he looked better. He didn't put up like a crazy score. It was only in the 60s, I want to say. Um, I think it was 62. 67. Um, yeah, it wasn't like anything special, but looked a lot better than Cowan has this whole season. So yeah, uh, Sincott is probably coming in, but... Not this week. Uh, do not go early on a rookie, and do not go early on a one or two k rookie. Yeah, it just ha historically has not been a good thing to do. Um, midfield, Dawson. I had to move him down. Um, finally, a bad score from him. It does kind of make him a lot more affordable now for people that don't have him. I still, I, I wouldn't bring him in until he's around about the six hundred k again. Um, over 650, you're not getting value out of anyone. So the 600k mark is where you're looking to bring people in at, especially these like super premiums. Stewart's at a great price now. Uh, Sinclair's at a great price. Sicily's at a really, really good price. Sicily will be top six, even if he's you know kind of getting thrown around the ground a bit. He'll be top six to top eight. Um, you know, there's a lot of value picks. I wouldn't be going after over 650k players. Bont saved the week with a 182 <clears throat> on f Friday night. I can't remember. I think, yeah, I think that was Friday. Um, yeah, it was really good. So, finally had that game where he puts it together for the four quarters. Uh, kicked a... I think it was two goals or was it one goal? I think it was two. 
Um, heaps of touches. I know a lot of people went English, which definitely isn't a bad move. Um, obviously, don't have English. I was tempted to go Darcy, actually, because I thought Darcy's bigger frame would kind of help him against English. Um, but, yeah, you know, I've thought... Bont had a 145 last week against what I'd call a lot harder opposition in Port. Um, so, yeah, just went with <clears throat> Bont at Optus, which is a pretty good ground for scoring. Um, I know you don't really see it through the West Coast, but... That's kind of just because the West Coast aren't a good team. They haven't been for a couple of years now. Um, yeah, against Hawks, though, I don't know if I'm going to vice Bont. I'm going to leave it on him, but uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, we'll see. But, yeah, great score from Bont. Great game, actually. Like, to watch, it was a great game from Bont. Terrible for free, though. Laird had a good week. Uh, I thought he was slightly underscored, but then he was kind of missing, I think, in the third. Um, and he did get hurt. Was it was that in the third? That's what I'm thinking of. So he went to the bench a bit. Um, maybe it was in the fourth. Uh, he went to the bench with it, a little knee injury. Uh, I don't think there was anything in it. It was just, uh, you know, got hit in the knee, felt it a little bit, went to the bench, got, went to go get some quick scans and stuff. Um, I don't think there was anything to it, though. We'll see when injury report and stuff comes out. Setterfield um, kind of just fell victim to a sub happening. I can't remember who it was, um, but it led to him kind of having to play around the field a bit, out of his role, which historically has not been good for Setterfield. He needs to be in that midfield CBA type of role. Um, yeah, it just really killed his scoring. Did come alive a bit in the fourth, um, but by then it was too late. Hollywood were so far, like, momentum-wise in front, there was, you know, there was nothing Essendon could do. Hopper, Hopper was good. Um, you know, down from last week, but last week it was, like, 114. So, 115. He was alright. Um, if Richmond just didn't collapse in the fourth, I reckon he would have tunned. Um, but yeah, they just fell apart in the fourth, especially at the end. Ashcroft, uh, it's probably one of the better rookie scores you can take from this week. So, I did see a couple of people trade on Ashcroft, which I don't think is the worst move, but considering how bad the rookie scoring has been, um, I would say keep him. He's someone that you can kind of rely on for a 70+, plus, which is, for a rookie, good enough. Um, and if he's, like, your only rookie on field, like, you could have this Setterfield, Hopper, Warple, um, Day, like, yeah, you put Day in the midfield or something like that, or once you bring Green back on, you know, you could make it that Ashcroft is your last rookie on field, and if that's the case, then, yeah, you're, you're fine with Ashcroft, just hold him until he, um, kind of, like, breaks the cash gen cycle, which, 51, he should still be able to make a fair bit. Um, yeah, Edwards wasn't great, but I spoke on that before. Just played on ground that wasn't great for him, and West Coast aren't too good. Uh, Ralston went with him over Johnson, because I thought, oh, 35, surely. Then Ralston played forward pocket, and that was just the end of it. I was thinking of Davey, but I was like, first game back in against Collywood on Anzac Day, maybe it's too big of an occasion. Um... Ended up playing not an amazing role. It was kind of just running around a fair bit. Um, you know, applying pressure. Um, which just isn't great for scoring in any format. So he did have a goal, saved his points a bit, or else this would have been like in the 30s. Um, what's his break in? 33? Hmm. Who they've got? They have... Geelong, oof, that's not great. At the G, at the G is probably a bit better for him, but not great. Um, but yeah, these rookies are just so bad. Um, luckily, there's only two on field. I'm going to see if I can get even Edwards off field, but I don't think it's possible. Not this week. Um, probably next week I could get him off field. And then, like again, you got the Ashcroft in the final mid spot, you take that. The Rucks, Darcy was great, like I was saying. Um, he's been on this just 
god save and run of form. Like, if he wasn't scoring like this, my rank would be so dead. I honestly, probably would have moved on from playing Supercoach this year. Um, Marshall, on the other hand, wasn't too good. Am looking to move on from him soon. Um, Gorn's got heaps to drop still. He's got like a 200 and something break even. If I can get Marshall to Gorn somehow, like maybe side swap that. Um, even, even if it's before the buys, like before Melbourne's buy, it's fine. Uh, I think you're just netting so many, so many extra points. You're, you're kind of fine with making a sideways trade. The forward line was pretty good again this week. Uh, I feel like last week they weren't. Um, that might be me remembering wrong. Maybe it was the week before. Uh, Dunkley was all right. Um, I'm still expecting like Dunkley to hit that like 140 game, that 150 game. It just it hasn't happened yet. His best was against North, but North aren't that great. You know, they they've made leaps and bounds over like being a watchable team. Um, but they're still, you know, they're waiting for the skill to kind of develop in the team. Um, yeah, kind of just waiting on Dunkley a bit. Taranto was really good. Um, not, he kind of wasn't as inefficient this week, I thought. I thought he was playing a bit better. The first half was a lot of helicopter kicking, um, but yeah, he, he cleaned it up a bit in the second. Rosie won the medal for his game. Um, yeah, was it him or Butters? I'm sure it was Rosie. Um, he, yeah, he played really good. West Coast really bad, so it's pretty easy for a mid to go off against them. Um, didn't catch all the game because, again, yeah, as a West Coast fan, when I see them down like 40 points, I kind of decide maybe it's time for me to go do something else. Adam Simpson shouldn't be in a job still. Let's just get that out of the way. Um, Canelio was the benefactor of Tom Green being out. Um, him and Kelly scored really good this week, which is good to see against when they lose against good opposition. Because you know, I think GWS are going to be a bottom team this year. Not the bottom, but towards it. Um, like, they're not beating a team like Adelaide. Then who they got next... They're not beating Sydney. I know Sydney looked horrendous this week, which we should probably talk about Goulden a bit. I wouldn't trade Goulden on. I still think he's going to be a top, say, a number forward. Um, I just think he's in a bad run of form because of all the injuries Sydney has. So he's kind of playing a little bit out of position. When everyone comes back and he's got the... Uh, CBAs, goes up forward, kicks a goal or two, and he's kind of just dominating around the midfield... Um, scoring will come back, so just give it time. They've got heaps of injuries at Sydney. It's really tough to kind of get a gauge on that team at the moment. Um, but yeah, GWS, their schedule is getting a bit tough now, so I could see why people want to get out of these picks, but back-to-back -back good scores from Cogs. Um, Kelly was good this week, 139. Tom Green coming back should be able to score right. Like you know, he he's fine. He gets his touches. Um, yeah, I think GWS are in a good spot. I just think Ralston's dead. That that is such a dead pick. I wouldn't be surprised if he's dropped or just the permanent sub for the team. Um, Sheasel wasn't good this week, but there's heaps that went into this. So this is probably the big talking point of the week. Um, outside, say if you brought in Tukamila, you trade him. Um, that's simple, right? Like he's going to be out. Weeks, not not just one or two. This is going to be multiple weeks, so you have to trade him. Sheasel, um, so he came in with two injuries. He had a corky, and then he had a thumb injury, or just a, a finger injury. Uh, led to oh, I thought he was going to get rested. To be honest, I'm surprised he didn't. Uh, Hall came in, I thought it was just going to be Hall laid in for Sheasel and, and rest him, but they b played both of them, it led to Sheasel getting tagged by Nick Holman, who, I mean, I, I don't know why you're tagging North, to be honest, I guess I understand Gold Coast doing it, because Gold Coast just really want wins at the moment, um, but, you know, I don't think people are going to be tagging North too often, Melbourne this week, um, 
I don't think he's copping a tag. But then uh, along with the tag, with Aaron Hall in, Sheasel did get moved forward. It was kind of just to break the tag a bit, and it was also just to get him moving around the ground a bit because he was hurt. Um, should be fine, though, going forward. We'll wait and see on the pick. At least one more week, give it, I'd say. Um, but this could be a, someone that you have to trade out, which is going to suck because I was doing the math before. Uh, so you have to trade him out next week. Say he drops another 50 next week. He's probably going to drop about 20k in cash, put him at 410, round about. Um, there's not a lot of options. You'd have to find a way to make up about 140k in the bank, which isn't going to be easy to do. So wait and see on him. Maybe you have to like move Siebel back up and get in a, a cheaper defender. And then Samson Ryan was really good. He just started grabbing marks this week. If It's funny because the other the last couple of weeks, he hasn't been able to grab a mark, but I thought he's been pretty accurate in kicking. Not like, yeah, setting the world on fire, but uh, infield kicking is, it is what it is for a big man. Um, but kicking at goal, I thought he's putting in good attempts. This week, I thought it was pretty poor. Uh, there was a lot of easy ones that he was just spraying. Um... If he could have put it together, this would have been a great score from him. Uh, it does suck, though, that Van Royen has kind of caught up. Um, he shouldn't have... this. He wasn't far from getting dropped, Van Royen. He did not look good all game. Um, and then the fourth quarter hit, and I reckon he had about a 60-point fourth quarter. He had three goals, and Richmond couldn't stop him. Richmond lost the game because of they couldn't handle Van Royen in the fourth. Yeah. So, not good, because I think Ryan was the better pick of the two, and now they've kind of caught up to each other, making it even. Uh, Fergus Green, I should have put the E on him, to be honest, but, yeah, it's whatever. I wasn't going to put him on field. Uh, and then Common was, he was all right. Um, I didn't see too much from him. I think we're just waiting for... Maybe like an injury, another injury in the uh, north ruck line. So, or maybe like later in the season, Goldstein starts to slow down because of his age and they make Combin a, a more proper ruck too. Because right now he's playing this forward role and he's just not that great at it. Uh, but yeah, that's the team. Um, as for trades, like I said, it's probably McKenna out this week because it gets me in. Will Day. So, this is the second time I've had to trade in Will Day because I brought him in and then he got suspended. But with his break even being super low, I think this is a no brainer. Um, can I just bring up his break even? Yeah. 15. Uh, he's someone that can average high 90s to over 100. Um, yeah, 139, 107. Just missed the ton against Sydney, who's a good team. And this was kind of before all the injuries hit Sydney as well. Dogs, probably not amazing for him, but he should be all right. Um, that has him going up to 500k. So, that's this the type of pick that you'd need to make. Um, I'd say Day is a must trade in this week. Even if you've got, like, the Took problem, uh, I'd probably swap Took to, say, like, a Merritt or a Kelly. Um, and then find a way to bring in Will Day. Even if it's for, like, Setterfield, whose cash in's kind of halted a bit, you could probably go Setterfield to Will Day. Um, you are sideways, like, making a sideways trade there, but you're you're going to net another 50k out of it, so... It's not the worst sideways in the world, um, but, you know, you could probably do a bit better. Yeah, it's just, this works for me. McKenna today, and then have to get another rookie off the field. Uh, I think it's like Cowan, I drop Dawson, I will drop Dawson back, and then I get in Seamus, uh, I, don't, I don't know how he spells Seamus, so I'll just do Mitchell, oh, he's a forward isn't he, um, how do I do this, I think it was that, no, how did I do it? Yeah, something like that. That that looks like right. 
Yeah, so we'll go with that. That's the trades for this week. It does put me down to 21, which I'm not a fan of. Um, but I think aggressive trade in this year is kind of the way to go. Uh, it puts me one rookie on field and defense who I can loop with Stocker. If Stocker puts up a 70, I'll just take him. Uh, the midfield, I do have two on field, but you know, it, it's just a price you have to pay. Um, can I do anything with this? If Ralston gets dropped, I can do a Johnson for Edwards, something like that. Um, Dave, he's probably going to stay in the side. Um, I don't think he looked bad enough to get dropped. Johnson, if he gets dropped, it's pretty much useless. And then Ralston. Alright, so not a lot I can do, to be honest. I can't even loop this, like, that's the same start time. Yeah, alright, that's a bit tough for the midfield. But then in the forward line, it's it's two rookies on, but I'm really comfortable with Sheasel, so I think that's fine. Um, we'll just go into a couple of players, because I feel like there's a lot to talk about in terms of players this week. So, where do we go? We go, it's tie break evens. We'll go from there. Um, so... Gorn, wait on him. I wouldn't go Grundy to Gorn yet. I'd go Grundy to English straight away. I'd lock that in. But if you were thinking of going to Gorn, I'd wait. 228 break even. That's another 50k to drop. He's going to be 500k. So I'd bring him in at that. <clears throat> Perryman is a nothing pick. Took, you got to trade him. So I'd say Took was the correct trade in. So like, if you're, you know hitting yourself over, like, oh, why did I bring in someone that got injured on 40? Um, no, this was the correct trade-in. He was a undervalued premium, <clears throat> or probably kind of at value. Um, and he's someone that, you know, gives 110% every week. So it's a good pick, just didn't pan out. And it happens. It's just unfortunate. Uh, Clary should drop a bit more once he comes becomes 600k. Everyone has to snap him up if you don't have him. He the, he, he had 10 clangers and still put up a good score. <laughs> like 98 with 10 clanger, uh, nine clangers is insane. Other players would be in the like 60s. Jack Steele, um, I'd hold on him for now because he's probably going to drop a bit more to 510k, 520k. Um, pick him up at the buys. Um, I think he's a good upgrade at the buys. This is someone that could go like Ashcroft to steal um, if you held Ashcroft. Other guys, Mitch Duncan. This is an in a couple of past years, Mitch Duncan's been a good pick. This year, it's just it's not there. The role's not good for him. LDU, a um, couple of bad scores back to back now. Seventy two last week. Um, what was it the week before? Um, well, 72 this week, and then last week it was a 90. 90 is not terrible against Brisbane. Brisbane are good. Um, and the North got smashed versus Brisbane. I guess that's the issue. So Melbourne will probably smash them. Saints will beat them pretty handedly. Like probably won't beat them by like 70 or anything like that, but they will beat them and it'll be uh, pretty decisive. Port, same thing. Sydney, if they're healthy, same thing. Collie would probably smash him. Essendon. Yeah, I mean, this run of games isn't great for North. I could see trading out of LDU, but it's a matter of... you've If you brought him in, you've like at basement price, you only made 2k or 3k on him. It, it's not a good trade out. You probably would just want to hold him and hope he gets better again. Um, unless you have heaps of trades in the bank. Like, maybe you haven't cop the injury bug like heaps of other teams have um, then you can trade him Aaron Hall no way do not if he puts up 130 this week do not trade in Aaron Hall he will get injured do not trade in Aaron Hall let him average whatever just let him do it the second you bring him in that hammy's going yeah and then now you have to trade him out to someone he's going to drop heaps of cash not worth it don't do it I'm speaking from experience Doherty is good around the buys. Like this is setting up pretty good for the buys. Um, if he drops under five hundred k, 
even before the buys, I'd probably bring him in. Saad, kind of the same thing. 143 is not crazy for Saad. I think he could average around the 100 to 110 with no Doherty in the team. So wait and see with him. Uh, I mean, he's averaging 109 at the moment. So if he drops to 530k, I'd like him at D6. Just food for thought there. Uh, Brayshaw, let him drop. Yeah, Freo have not looked good at all. Like, to the point of the only... There's only two Freo players I'd even think about having in my team. And that's Sarong, who's having a breakout year, and he's looking really good. And then Darcy, who... If you haven't got him, don't trade him in. It's it's really only those two. Brayshaw just hasn't... Maybe it's the last year he had, or the last two years, he's been kind of breakout into another breakout... So it's kind of gotten around the league. People are putting more attention onto him, and it, he's just not coping with it. Wait and see. Like he's probably he's well he's he is going to drop under five hundred k. Um, even then, I don't know if you want to bring him in. Maybe is like a value M eight. But even then, like he, if he's not averaging over one hundred five, then he's just not a good pick. Goulden, like I said, wait for the injuries to heal for Sydney um, and then see how he's going. But I think this is a bargain pick, 470k. Like, this is someone that is fine to take a punt on. Um, I wouldn't do it this week, though. Um, wait for the injuries to heal for Sydney. Grundy, I'd trade him on this week. Um, ideally, you'd go English. Then you'd probably have to put Darcy at two. But it's like English... And then Darcy. Like, it's there's a huge gap between them. Um, English is by far the best ruck in the game. Wits, everyone's traded by now. Um, Riley O'Brien at under 500k is kind of value. He's only averaging 90, though, I guess. Um, Will Brody is dead after last year. Mills. Mills is one that I was thinking about. So I've got a little notepad set up about players I'm looking at for the buys. Um, I start playing early just because I was bored. Um, if he drops to around the 500k mark and he gets his midfield roll back, this is a pick right here. Um, he last year averaged like, what, 115? Can I see that? What did he average last year? I can't see that, right? Uh, 22. One, yeah, 116. If you can get 115, 115 let's say, uh, out of like 520k, that's a huge steal for you because that's going to be a top mid. Crips um, scored good this week, but off last year. Stats say he doesn't score the best with Walsh back in the team. Kind of saw it last week. Not not this week, last week, uh, with just the 80, but I guess they kind of got smashed in Adelaide. Um, I think that's about it. I guess Sinclair, he's a good trade-in. If you're looking for a defender, that's value at the moment. Uh, you got Sinclair. you got uh, Sicily, he's somewhere in here. Uh, I'll just speak about, like, Jake Lloyd. Don't bring him in. He's kind of old at the time. Like, he, he's older now. His body's not as durable. He's not going to have... A good enough season to warrant a trade in. Noah Anderson is one I'm going to be looking at this week. Um, he probably scored too good and priced himself out. He's already at almost a hundred. Need a bad game from 134, and that's with two in the team. 109, that's not bad. I think Noah Anderson is going to have a good season now that Tuke's out. Um, it's just, is he going to hit 600k? Even then, you're not. You're only making sixty k on him. Yeah, probably too late on him. Now that I think about it, Rich is a no. Dusty's a no. Neil, Neil's a good pick. Six thirty k. That's a good pick. Um, yeah, Sicily five five thirty k. Five thirty k for a top six mid, uh, top six defender. That's pretty good. Like. Ah, it's just Will Day is very good value at the moment because he's going to make so much cash. But yeah, those are kind of the value picks, uh, the guys I'd be targeting this week. 
Um, let me know how you guys are going. Uh, I know a lot of people copped carnage this week. Um, but yeah, I'll see you all next time. Tasty out.